Um, so I think I've touched on this before, but out of all the places on the internet to consume bad fan fiction, Wattpad is my favorite. It's wildly popular with tween girls in that intersection of age and interest demographics where they feel the least shame. So obviously this results in a lot of bizarre stories. So if you scroll past all the top trending topics of teen summer romance and fairy tale princes, and werewolves and being kidnapped, you might start to find some more specific story categories uh, that you wouldn't have guessed were there. Personally, I like to run searches for weird keywords I think of. I like to say to myself, there's no way this search query would yield results, and it always does. You can say to yourself, hmm, I wonder if there's any Josh Hutcherson fanfic, and there's a story for that. I wonder if I could find a fanfic about falling in love with Nick Jonas, specifically at the point in his career when he had left the Jonas Brothers and was starring in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying on Broadway. And there's a story for that. Or you can say, I wonder if there's a story about falling in love with the various members of One Direction, specifically within the universe of the Purge horror franchise. And there are so many stories for that. There are more than you could ever read. So in honor of the new Purge movie hitting theaters, I thought that we could discover some of these stories together. Right away I'm drawn to this one that's simply called The Purge by Haley Directioner XX. Hannah suffers through The Purge every year, but her dad ranked an eight so they were never affected until the ranking was raised and they didn't have a good security system. What happens when a certain blonde haired boy breaks in? And there's a picture of the blonde One Directioner. I don't know them by face. I'm not even sure I could name them all. My name is Hannah Rose Park, 13, and live in Rosenberg. Not sure if hat's a real place. And today is March 31st, 2014. Why is that date important? Because it is the day of the annual purge. I hate it. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> That's what it sounds like in the movie, right? All our heads turn to the TV. All our heads by my mom, Angie, my dad, Justin, and my younger sister, Kayla. This is some good world building. I'm glad we know her parents' first names. This is the emergency broadcast system here to announce the soon-to-be start of the annual purge. All connections to help such as police and hospitals will be suspended. Quick note, isn't there actually just a thing that they say every purge movie? Uh, I don't have it memorized, but I'm pretty sure this is not it. And why wouldn't the author just go, like, copy and paste the quote from the movie of what the announcement says for The Purge? Anyone can fall victim except officers ranking 10 or above along with their family. Thank you. The Purge begins is... five minutes. <laughs> I guess it wasn't copy-pasted. They raised the ranking level, my father said. His name is Justin, by the way. It used to be level eight and my father was there. So we were safe. We weren't safe now. My mother cried into my father's shoulder. We always thought we were safe, so we never bought the best security system. I, okay, just because the purge makes all crime legal for 24 hours and they might have immunity for those 24 hours, doesn't mean that there would be no crime the rest of the year. So why wouldn't you still have home security? With one minute to spare, our main character runs to her bedroom as her family waits behind, I guess just huddling and waiting for death to come for them. That's the spirit. I felt a cool breeze come from my window. I shivered. I was certain I locked it out of fear. I saw a metal bars coming down slowly. Not the best security. I closed the glass and pulled shut the curtain. How are the bars not the best security? That's pretty good. I was picturing nothing, like maybe a deadbolt on the door. I guess like the standards are much higher in the Purge universe. I was about to turn around when I felt a hand cover my mouth and a arm snake around my chest. Not in that way, you dirty readers. Tongue sticky out of your face. Does she mean the hand isn't also copying a feel? Because I hadn't thought that it was. I screamed, he just held me closer. Honey, my mom panicked. Tell her everything is all right or I'll cut you. Don't think I won't. This is definitely one of the boys from One Direction. E everything's fine. I, I just t, t tripped 
Okay, thank God. Her mom was like really ready to believe that excuse on the night of the purge. He turned me around so I was facing him, but his hand still covered my mouth. He was kind of short, with icy blue eyes and beautiful blonde hair, with some brown styled in, a somewhat like a quiff. I think she means quaff. Also, I was kind of kidding when I said this was a boy from One Direction who's violently assaulting her in her home. I kind of thought that One Direction was gonna save her from this man. Okay, Hannah, here's of this is gonna work. I am gonna stay in your room. You're gonna stay here too. If someone wants on, say no. When the purge is over, this isn't. You're gonna leave with me, got it? I shook my head. I'm not going anywhere with you. you. <sighs> yes, you are. You see, I'm the most wanted criminal in the world, and you do not want to be on my bad side. So you can come the easy way, or I can knock you out. I don't know anymore if this is a member of One Direction. It might just be a dreamy bad guy. Okay, um, how about me play a game? I looked at him confused. Me too. Hey, I we aren't leaving his room for 12 hours then we should at least lighten the mood. I looked at the clock. Eight o'clock. We didn't play a game, but I listened to him talk for what felt like hours. I learned his name is Niall Horan. He has a knife and a gun with him, and he has killed 400 people. He likes the purge because he doesn't have to take care of the body. I kind of thought that his murders all happened on the purge. If he's just a normal criminal, why is this story even set during the purge? He could have just kidnapped her on any day. The purge doesn't add any additional tension to this story. Maybe worse guys are gonna come in from the purge and he will then become her protector instead of her kidnapper. She falls asleep on him, wakes up and, and he's watching Paranormal Activity 4. I'm glad you're up. I was about to wake up when the movie ended. It's almost seven o'clock. I think he meant he was about to wake her up. Come here, Niall demanded. I nodded and sat a two feet away from him. He chuckled. No, here. He pointed right next to him. I obeyed. He held me uncomfortably close. She's 13. 6.54. The movie ended. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is to announce the ending of the purge. Until this date at 7 p.m. next year, all crime is illegal. Hear that, love? It's time. So he was waiting for his opportunity to kidnap her, which he decided would be after the purge ended, even though crime was legal on the purge, so he could have done it then, but he does crime anyway the rest of the year, and the purge is the night everyone has metal bars come down over their windows, so it's actually maybe the worst time to kidnap somebody if you're already a criminal because their guard will be up. Oh good, chapter three begins with an all caps author's note that says, just so you know, she's 13 years old. I know. That's why I'm worried. He stood up from our spot on the floor and dug under the bed. Where the hell do you keep your backpacks? He half asked, half demanded. M my parents' room. Weird question, weirder answer. Go and get one. If you don't come back, just come back. Trust me. Despite Niall's very compelling threats, Hannah, of course, uses the opportunity to tell her parents that there's a dangerous One Direction boy in her room. There's a man in my room. He says his name is Niall. He has a gun and he wants to take me away. Wait, Niall? As in Niall Horan, my father said. He's a directioner. She turns around. Niall is here. Of course he caught on to her little escape plan. I cowered. Stop. Leave her alone. The purge is over. This is illegal again. My father boomed, convincing. I don't really care, Niall sneered sarcastically, dragging the eye and speeding up on the don't really care part. Okay, I'm getting directions after the fact. Let me try this again. I don't really care. He stepped forward. No, please, no. He glared at me. He drew his gun and bang. I closed my eyes. But instead of silence and weeps from my mom, I hear my father cry in pain. Not her father, Justin. My eyes spring open and I see they shot my father in the leg. I screamed and rushed to his side just as it occurred to my mother what had happened. Her eyes were open. What's her excuse? He grabbed my arm and dragged me away. No, my mother protested. Please, no. I need her. <laughs> What's a weird 
reason to not want your daughter to be kidnapped? Let me think about it. No, Niall is sassy. He walked to her and throw two hard blows to her head, knocking her unconscious. I screamed. He looked at my sister and sighed, come here. Oh my God, her sister's like seven, right? Isn't it her younger sister? He pulled out a red rag that was slightly wet. Breathe this in and I won't hit you unconscious, okay? What a gentleman. She fell limp, I whimpered. My dad went into shock and was out cold as well. So part of her fantasy is that the blonde boy from One Direction will break into her house and injure her entire family. Don't cry, love. I didn't kill them, but I will if you disobey me again. Understood. It's just a period, it's not a question. Understood. <laughs> like to himself. He pulled me into a hug that was extremely comforting. He actually hugged him back while crying. He was surprised at first, but then held me tighter. Shh, shh, shh. it's okay. Everything will be fine. Don't worry, calm down. Shh, it's all right. Shh, I won't hurt you. He's good at this. So we jump to the next chapter, and it turns out we're going to be subjected to all of the same events we just saw, but now from Niall's perspective. When the window was open all the way, I stepped one foot through, then the next. The room was neat and tidy, and the bed was made. There was a girl on the bed. She looked young, maybe 13. Must they keep reminding me of that? This room looked like a freaking schoolgirl's room, except for the five SOS five seconds of summer, and Paramore posters outlining the walls. Wait, the room looked like a child's room except for the boy band posters? There was something about this girl that just made me want to hug her. What? Hug? But in Niall Horan, most wanted criminal everywhere, especially in the US and UK. 400 murders. <sighs> I'm not gonna read that part. I killed teenagers, murdered families, strangled infants, and burnt down primary schools. And I wanna hug this one girl? This one kid? What is wrong with me? My hand brushed the cold handle of my knife. I then got an idea. If I seem so attracted to her, not in a sexual way, oh good, thank God, why don't I keep her? I was originally seeking shelter. Not that I really needed it, but I didn't want to fight and found her instead. Okay, we're back to Hannah's point of view. He was smirking. I won't hurt you physically, he continued. Well, what? I stuttered. I won't hurt you physically. By mentally, I won't hesitate unless you do as you're told. Okay. However, you need to be punished for back talking. He turned around and walked to my sister. I gasped as he stepped toward her. He glided the blade down her cheek, making a deep cut. I watched in fear as the deep red rolled down her cheek. That her little sister, he just scarred her face. She passes out and he carries her out of the house. It's very romantic. I woke up to the sound of an engine shutting off. I shook away the sleep and looked around. We were on a quiet street in a carport. Niall saw I was awake and smiled. Welcome home, princess. I'm maybe gonna jump ship from this story soon because it turns out it had very little to do with the purge, but let's check in on the comments. Five SOS. This is so heart melting. Yes. Burn my school with my teachers in it. Okay, I think that's our sign that it's time to move on. This one is just called Purge One Direction by Bedstand. One last reminder, all emergency services will be suspended for a 12 hour period during the purge. The streets are filled with people trying to kill one another. Nobody can stop what they're doing. It was what always happened on the annual day of the purge. Author's note, okay, I can't wait to start this. Like you don't understand, okay? I hope you'll enjoy the story because I'll enjoy writing it, XX. And that is literally all she wrote and the story was never updated again. Um, doing really well so far. Let's keep going. Their Purge, One Direction Alternate Universe. 9 p.m. 
on the dot. Another show had ended. Each boy had sipped their individual waters and they'd gathered backstage for yet another meeting with their management. No one could deny that they hated their management. Sometimes they even organized professional photographers to follow the boys around just so they could form what the boys liked to call it publicity stunts. They didn't get to make their own plans or their own dates. They didn't even get to plan when they'd get a break from their tiring schedule. It was like they were chained down by the ankles and being pulled along like puppets playing a game. Wow, we got three metaphors for that sentence. Of course, they couldn't speak out about it though. They'd lose everything. It was cruel. Their sleeping schedules had even gone off the rails because of the stupid hours they'd be woken up at, or the stupid hours they'd stay up until practicing again and again. Rehearsals were also planned by their management. They used to be fun. They used to run around the stage and get used to their surroundings before arena shows, but now they'd stand with microphones and be forced to sing the set list. Oh, not that. I hate this, Liam muttered under his breath. The fans liked to call him Daddy Direction, but of course management didn't like that either. Neither do I. Hello, boys, a woman addressed them. She was the deputy head of their management. She was the one who organized photographers and plans for the boys. They despised her most. You three, she pointed her pen at Lewis, Niall, and Harry. Stop giving fans something to buzz about online. It creates rumors and lowers your reputation. Also, those wrestling matches you have on stage? Stop those too. You're always out of breath and wheezy afterwards. Doesn't sound good. Um, I'm gonna sound really mean, but her suggestions all sound kind of reasonable so far. She had a grimace on her face. Liam looked as if he wanted to punch the look straight off her lips. Is this story going to culminate in the boys of One Direction punching a woman in the face? So you want us to be a stereotypical boy band? That's just not us, Harry spoke up with a frown. He didn't necessarily get angry. He more or less got upset during these meetings. After she walked out, Liam had both fists balled up. His heart was racing. I'm sick and tired of being controlled. I'm sick of, of being treated like like a wild animal. Liam tossed his arms up in the air as he searched for reaction from the boys he classed as his family. We need to do something, something big, something no one would expect. And I know exactly what we can do. I hope it's not running away during the purge and getting into hijinks. He's actually being very cryptic about his plan. He keeps saying things like, we'll do it tomorrow. And I, I think it's basically what I said it was gonna be, but the story is really burying the lead. And the chapter ends with this italicized paragraph. It's not spoken by any of the characters. It's just like, the author, the narrator, ever heard of the purge? Yeah, that's right. The Purge, for 12 hours, all crime, including murder, is legal. Scary to think about, right? Does it give you chills? At any moment, you could be brutally murdered, robbed. You could become a victim of any crime possible. Criminals breaking free and causing havoc. I know what you're thinking. Why would five boys who have full hearts do something like that? Well, because the only way to stop management is to get rid of them. I really misread this. Apparently, this is actually a story about One Direction murdering their management team. Chapter two is all just them going over their plans, they're going to steal a boat to get away, and Lewis and Harry hold hands, so I think they're in love. I think this is one of those fanfics. Chapter three, phase one commences. Zane started speeding up the boat, smirking to himself as the boat sped across the open water. This is awesome, he muttered to himself and steered the boat to the left, receiving what sounded like a squeal from either Harry or Lewis. Having fun there, Liam asked as he poked his head around, spotting a mischievously smirking Zane and Niall sat down eating a bag of crisps. It gives you such adrenaline driving the boat, man, controlling the speed and what it does. I'm having the best day of my life. 
Zane shouted the last bit. Okay, this has turned a little whimsical. After a while, they got to the place they needed to be. Cautiously jumping out of the boat and running to the apartment, Liam had always kept a secret. Once they got there, there seemed to be what was an array of weapons set across a large table. Everybody had a few weapons on them. Harry was anxiously holding a few guns and a knife that had been sharpened previously. Lewis the same. Zane had a bat alongside a gun and something else that Liam couldn't quite work out. Is it his upcoming single for when he ditches the band? While Niall simply took a gun, a knife, and a sandwich. I'm glad they're working in some humor before they brutally murder all of their employees. Okay, and now they're just going to sleep. Um, I, I thought they were gonna go out and get everybody this chapter. But that is not what's happening. Chapter five is an author's note saying she's busy with exams. Chapter six, primarily more hand-holding between Lewis and Harry. Ready, lads? Liam asked with a raised eyebrow. He held the door handle. Let's go. And the story was never updated again. Probably for the best, I gotta say. Okay, um, before we say goodbye to this fic, gonna look at the comments again. I'm just gonna guess that the fans of One Direction are not going to be very sympathetic to the management who's about to be brutally murdered. Yes, 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 I'm so excited for this. Wow. It's honestly really sad that this has most likely happened IRL. Which part of it? In the interest of time, I'm just gonna do a quick flyover of some of the other stories I'm seeing. The Purge, Harry Styles, book one, slowly editing. It all started one day, that one day she met those emerald eyes. But instead of a smile covering her mouth, it was a rag full of gas. She got kidnapped by Harry Styles in the United States issue of The Purge. And when the purge is out of control and unable to stop, will they escape or even survive? What will come for her in this life or death situation? Well, besides Harry Styles, of course. Was that intentional? Warning, this story is rated PG-13, contains foul language, graphic scenes, and sexual content. I think that was intentional. Read at your own risk. All rights reserved, copyright. What part of this story does she think she's copywriting? So this is one of those fan fictions. We're not gonna read this one, but let's check out the comments. I know, right? If I live next to a Walmart, you'd never find me at home. This story is definitely Definitely one of my favorites. Good job writing so far. Love it. I would have been jugging hella Nutella. All crime is legal soup. Next story, The Night of the Purge, a Harry Styles fanfic by Nyan14. 17 year old Alex, her boyfriend Harry, and her family are in their home getting ready for the purge through horror and betrayal. What will happen? This one seems pretty basic. It sounds like it's just a normal purge story and her boyfriend just is Harry Styles. Probably not a pop star in this universe. Feel comfortable skipping that one. Part of the purge, Larry and Neam, 1D. Which one is Larry? For 12 hours straight, all crime is legal. Lewis and Harry get held hostage. Liam and Niall steal some stuff. When One Direction take part in the purge, will Larry's get tattoo explanation? Will Niall convince Liam to take part? This is based off of the movie The Purge. It's kind of comedy and romance with Larry and Neam. Okay, oh, okay. Larry is Lewis and Harry being shipped together. Hashtag Harry Styles. Hashtag Larry. Hashtag Larry is real. Hashtag Larry Smut. Hashtag Larry Stylinston. Hashtag Smut Warning. Hashtag The Purge. The Purge Anarchy. One Direction. One night where all crime is legal. One night that the citizens of America can release all hatred without permission. Oh, this one sounds really boring. Cut this one, Jenny. Don't leave it in. It is tagged five seconds of summer, though. Intriguing. The Purge. One Direction fanfic. The annual Purge kills hundreds, maybe thousands every year. I don't know why we still do it. People are stupid and insane. Killing innocent, even going after homeless and children? I have never really left my house after the siren goes. I wouldn't want to. This one looks promising for our last fic of the night because I see it is ranked number 77 in Purge. The author has also written a sequel to this story, which means it was received well and completed. Chapter one, 
Are you children excited? Jim asks. Tomorrow marks the beginning of the annual purge. My father died when I was 13 while saving someone during the purge. My mother remarried to a guy named Jim who works at the security company. She's happy and we have the best protection, but he could never replace my father who died being a hero. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. That's what I plan to do. Well, not exactly the die early part, but I would hope to be thought of as a hero. Help the innocents who get killed so mercilessly every year. I am training to be a doctor like my father was. Jim is just a replacement. Ouch. No, I say furiously. Who is excited for a day of killing and torture? Sick people get the chance to roam free and abuse human rights, which in my point of view is stupid, no matter if it brings down the rate of crime or unemployment. I leave up to my room, leaving my mother and Jim shocked behind me. Jacob, you nearly gave me a heart attack. What are you doing here? I question my boyfriend. He is not a bad influence, just a little older than me. Which is why Jim doesn't like me seeing him. Oh, now we know why she doesn't like Jim. But Jim isn't my dad and can't tell me what to do. I love you too much, Jacob. I don't know why Jim doesn't like you. He kisses me hungrily. What follows can be described as mind-blowing. That was great, I pant. Okay, we get like a tasteful cutaway with Tilda's, but she has sex with her boyfriend upstairs, apparently. While eating supper, the sirens go, reminding us that the killing may commence. After supper, I excuse myself to my room. Hey, baby. I would have screamed if I didn't already know the voice and smell of cologne. Jacob, I whisper. I was gonna leave, but then I thought, I'm tired of sneaking around. I'm gonna tell Jim about us, he says, walking through my door. He was only wearing an old robe that he managed to grab from my closet, seeing as his clothes weren't exactly clean. I've decided that I need to tell your disapproving father about us, and the day to do it is right now on the one day of the year that murder is legal. And I'm going to do it naked. Seconds later, I hear gunshots. Praying it was from outside, I spring up. I cut myself off with a scream, falling over the rest of the stairs, looking back to see what had been left for me to trip on. The dying body of my loving boyfriend. What did you do? I scream, all the color drained from my face. I try to carry his body to my room, watching as the color drains from his face and the blood from his wound. Don't worry, Mel. I love you, he breathes. I love you too, Jacob. I love you, I cry, laying my head on his chest, which has stopped moving. Goodbye, Jacob. I love you, I whisper. I walk down the stairs, eyes glossy from tears. How could I possibly be so calm after losing the love of my life? That's just how it is now. People are always dying. I wish I could have stopped Jim, but I couldn't, and now there's nothing I can do. I'm sorry, Melanie. I thought he was an intruder. I didn't know he was up there. You always were too good for him. There will be someone else, Jim says. Jim needs to work on his apologies. Don't touch me. I loved him, and you've ruined that. I only came down because I hate being alone during the purge. How about we go watch the TV, my mother suggests, hoping to break some of the tension. Good luck. She switches on the monitor, allowing us to see outside the house. All boring. No murders. People trying to break in and failing. Everyone in my neighborhood has almost the same system. All is boring until five boys come along screaming for help. There's only one comment on this chapter and it says, stupid Jim. <laughs> That's fair. Chapter two, Niall. There was nothing we could do. It's hard running while carrying your best mate on your back. The five of us were rushing back when the sirens went. The reapers began chasing us, shooting aimlessly around, one hitting my arm and the other hitting Harry in the chest. Harry's since passed out. The neighborhood we entered all had steel doors and bars, clearly no getting in. Help! Four of us yelled. The Beatles movie is way different than I remember it. Look guys, they ran in here. Damon, head of the reapers, yells. Melanie's point of view. Jim, let them in, I state calmly. Melanie, no one is coming in or out, he says, trying to reason, but my mind is made up. Jim, they are dying. Look at them, they're desperate. I know I'm not perfect, but please, just this once, trust me. Plus, you kinda owe me, you know. You did shoot my boyfriend, I say, calmly but close to tears. He nods. 
unlock them. So she lets One Direction into the house and starts immediately evaluating the situation. How long ago was he shot? I asked. Some people were chasing us. I didn't say how, I said when. About an hour ago, I'd grab a knife and heat it over my stove. If these people are going to act like barbarians, then so am I. You're gonna kill him, one boy yells, trying to pull my hand away. Stop. I'm the only thing keeping him alive right now. The bullet is still barely in his chest. I plunge a finger in, pulling out the bullet. Get his shirt all the way off and hand me the bandages. I can't believe that in a fanfic by a One Direction fangirl, these are the circumstances of taking the boy's shirt off. And the narrator is so far just completely unaffected by these boys. And now they can leave, Jim says, pointing to the door. I look in shock. No, I yell. That one there is still unconscious and he can barely move. And what did I say? No one else is dying tonight. Jim looks furious. Mel, please, you know why I did what I did. I'm sorry, but they have to go. I heard you the first time. And if they have to go out there with the Reapers, then so will I. You did what you did because you were selfish and angry and wanted my respect. You are never going to be half the man or role model my father was. They are staying here and no one is dying. Okay, having read forward a bit, this story is like not even a romance. It's just a very straightforward action survival movie about this teenage girl going full Rambo and, and saving the lives of the boys of One Direction. She knows how to treat wounds on the fly, and she knows how to fight, and she arms them all. It's just, it's, it's kind of amazing. And it was so popular that she even wrote a sequel to it. The Revolution, sequel to the Purge One Direction story. Just when I thought it was over, I thought everything would be okay and that me and Niall could live normally with the rest of the boys, except Zane and my family, except my stepfather. No, oh, no, Jim. But the purge is now a worldwide holiday. No matter how far you run, there is no getting away. Yeah, in hindsight, that does make me question why the boys of One Direction were on tour in the US across the time of the purge. You'd think that would be like circled on a lot of calendars as a day to avoid. We were safe once, but without Jim, our knowledge of defense is at a minimum. Hope may be the only thing keeping us alive. I think that's as deep as we're going to go down the rabbit hole today, but I have to say I am actually delighted by how different all these stories were. Actually, um, what I expected was just that girls would be in peril on the purge and One Direction would show up and help them. And I don't think that was any of the stories. For worst story, I'm going to nominate uh, the two identical seeming stories about being kidnapped by various members of One Direction during the purge. I find that creepy. I even made that joke at the beginning about how one of the genres on Wattpad is kidnapping stories. It, it turns out they'll work kidnapping into whatever they can. Maybe that story about Nick Jonas on Broadway was also a romantic kidnapping story. And that last one is definitely the best. It's weirdly empowering. I like that that girl's fantasy isn't even to get with the boys of One Direction, it's just to like be an action hero and save them through hyper competence and get back at her stepfather, who's not her real dad and he's the worst. I don't know why there's this crossover of genres between One Direction and The Purge. Within The Purge movies, The Purge is a source of evil and the protagonists don't even want to be a part of it. It's just the villainous characters who want to go out and cause all this trouble. But I think the appeal of the franchise is it is an alternate universe and it's a big universe and you can imagine yourself in it. You can ask yourself, what would I do? In the films, the purge is used as an opportunity to rob and murder and kill. But if you strip it to its purest implications, the purge is just endless opportunity without inhibition. And some of us, when we're stripped of all our rules and inhibitions, all we want to do is date One Direction. Now, I should clarify, I'm an old fogey, and the reason I put One Direction in my keywords is that I still think that's what tweens like, even though One Direction is like over. That's not what's in vogue anymore. So I figured One Direction would have yielded a lot of fan fiction, and I was correct, but if you search just The Purge, you will find a lot of other things paired with it. So yes, there are newer, more relevant Purge fanfics. Nowadays, it seems like girls want to use The Purge to date BTS, the Dolan Twins, and there, finally, the Holy Grail. There are some tween girls who, stripped of inhibitions, want to use the purge to date Team 10. And maybe that's the greatest evil of all.
Okay, I cut it for time because it's actually really disturbing, but that second fanfic with the 13 year old that gets kidnapped by Niall is, is really funny. I did read like the whole thing. Niall takes her back to a house where he lives with the rest of One Direction who are also criminals and they keep the main character as like a daughter, like it's not a romantic thing, but I just wanted to share my favorite part. Now for that tour, I pulled us to our feet and pointed to an island. There's the kitchen, I led us to the stairs, and when we reached the top, I pointed at each door. The first door at the end of the right is the bathroom, then Landry room. Across from that, we got my room, and at the other end is the basement, the room you have to stay out of. I know I said we were on the second floor and the basement, but it has an extra long staircase that leads there. My house was built funny. And then there's an extended sequence where Zane spanks her. And that's why we didn't finish that story.